Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Christian. I'm been working in the Qt company for a little bit more than four years now. Um, long time ago, I started to to ask around about the Qt project website. As we all know, in the past, there, there used to be a website, then it was merged, and then uh, there was no official kind of solution out there. And um, I was asking around and people were telling me like, yeah, well, yeah, we tried, it didn't work, whatever. <clears throat> but after a lot of effort with a lot of people, we managed to say, okay, you know what? Let's have one static page that um, has the information that can help people to contribute to Qt. So um, this website was released a couple, a couple of years ago, I think, or I kind of remember. But as you all can see now, there is, in my opinion, a lot of information on the main page. As you can see there, there are many text boxes, plots, text, more text. So as a first step, I guess that it was OK to have this. Um, as soon as we published this and I wrote a blog post, people decided to give me feedback. And then we managed to create a, a Jira, a Jira um, project there. And uh, people have been reporting. I think that there is a couple of open bugs. Like, for example, one that I remember is that you here have the top 10 contributors per module and per year. And um, people would like to see like more numbers here just to see, oh, where I am in the number 20 something or whatever. So there are different things like that that I could be improved as always. Um, so I wanted now to maybe present you a few details of the implementation and a new idea of restructuring the the, the page itself. But uh, in a nutshell, I just want to hear if you are willing to give some feedback regarding an idea that you have, or more importantly, if you would like to push some, some patches here and make the website better. Um, I, I am under the impression that there shouldn't be many comments and a lot of discussions. So if someone can take notes of what people point out um, or maybe do request, I know that usually we, we require to open bugs on Jira, but we can make a little exceptions in case you have some comments that are not so complicated that maybe if someone can write them down. Anyone that can take some notes regarding what people complain or suggest? If not, I can improvise. Yeah, free. Free. Okay. Okay. Samuel, offer. thanks again. In any case, Friedman, for, for it. Thank you very much, Samuel. Shouldn't be much, I hope. OK, first of all, um, what is this thing? Uh, this is a simple dashboard. Is there is I am no web developer, so please forgive me if I show you something that insults your knowledge in CSS or HTML. This is a dashboard made with Python. Um, it's using an enter, a module that is called Dash. As you can see here, even in the website, they, they pull their oh, enterprise, whatever. But there is open source, so you can see there a little tab with the information. So this comes from this uh, company that's called Plotly that they decided to start doing some interactive. Oh, now it's only Dash. OK, whatever. They started to do simple Python script, like inspire by what, what um, Matplotlib was doing, but to have things on the browser. So as you can see here, I think that there is a gallery even with um, cool projects that people has been doing with Dash. Um, well, there are, of course, really simple ones, but I remember there was one that was quite cool. Oh, my god, look at this one. Uh, but yeah, any case, so automatic things, I think that here in the top there was a nice, maybe one kind of like you can do things and then, I don't know, data gets plotted. And so there is a lot of like output input signaling inside. Ah, there you can see that something changed. Why dash? I don't know. And I'm not really, uh, I was just looking for something interactive on the browser, simple to do with Python, because I had some, I originally I had some plots working on the data from the modules. And uh, and then I wanted to not to change that or not have intermediate files. So I decided to do it with Python as well. 
if you know d3.js or whatever other fancy things and you have a better suggestion because whatever library is better i think that nobody is against trying something new but at least the solution that we have at the moment works it's simple enough and um, there is no harm in it so maybe before jumping into the code itself um as you notice here in the url um every time now or you can try it yourself at home but if you go to cute-project.org you will get a redirect to contribute that cute project the reason of this is not marketing or whatsapp whatever is that um we have the cute project domain and um, host on a heroku instance so because of some sys admin mambo jumbo thing there we cannot have a website using kind of like the central domain in the past you remember that every time that you were going maybe to cute dash project.org you will redirect to cute project org dot heroku app dot, dot com that well that was really ugly url and um it was of course feels like even like a phishing website but now we decided that it makes more sense is we have code review cute project we could redirect to have contribute cute uh, project dot org this is something that at least I, I settled with the people that is in charge of configuring the hosting and everything there so not to be too creative with that or not that we could do any black magic or dark uh, spell on changing this and having only kit project but I, I guess that it's quite um insightful and it makes sense to have contribute that cute project dot org um so uh well we have already have questions oh this is gonna be a suspension of their get the open source version on there yeah yeah so yeah i mean as i said in the website here you say well it literally if you go in a python environment you do pip install dash and that's it so not really something complicated um this code is available uh maybe you didn't notice but this is the repo the namespace and the repo and um I only have been pushing stuff there, so in case you want to clone it, I can I can show it to you the code. But before jumping into that, I just wanted to show you kind of like the new idea that I had for the distribution. So this is something that is running locally. Uh, there's nothing fancy here. It's mainly to have the things distributed in different pages. I didn't want to have like everything like to there like um, uh, everything together. So here you can find it's just an idea as I said um additional distribution for general information about what is this website well there's two services status we have here an announcement about a good contributor summit and here we have like kind of kind of like really naive and simply simple things like how to contribute you know this information of course is not uh, i didn't wrote this by myself but uh, i took this from the wiki page and the many other resources that we have so create account configure gareth commit and push so with some links of course there um i decided to split this thing here like for example if you go to the data then you have a specific page as you see here for the data which are the same plots that we had on the main page now uh, but i wanted to maybe to have something that everything this was together is somewhat was really interesting to have this could go here the other one uh, that needs a lot of love is the contribution guidelines. I decided to put the sections on data square, but it's still, I guess that we could somehow be more creative here. As I said, this information is something that I took from many websites and wiki page. Um, only that. And the only thing that uh, I think that would be missing in this patch is that the quips. As you can see, this is a really empty page there was a um, thing that eddie at some point raised the concern like maybe we could render the whips within this website i mean if you go to for example the government model it goes to the other website that we have so the idea that i had was like to maybe put all this content here on the side and then here in the main space you can have the content of the quips and then you can click around and change the content there does it make sense for you do you think it's a good idea to have like the quips render here instead of going to the page yeah i absolutely want to have them under cuteproject.org i think that's much much better than having them under under heroku app somewhere okay. on an external web page so that's the result, that i the think is very good 
There's also a script that generates clip zero, which is the list of all the others. So yeah. you could use that to produce a consistently um, styled little page here. Yeah. Uh, another option, if you want to have less work, is would be simply to um, do the same change that you did for uh, for cute project dot for contribute .cute project .org and create a quip .cute quips .cute project .org and uh, use the existing content there, just one to one. Yeah, I mean, Eddie, you were in charge of creating the other page, right? Yep. And so given some changes you... in Heroku's security policy, I can't actually do, do any updates anymore. So I th the idea of finally getting around to having a proper site for it sounds great to me. OK, so maybe I can try it and uh, put these things, render there, and we can have it all together. So let me show you a little bit about the code, how this thing works. Um, so here, for example, I have the, well, the page is running in the other tab, but um, it's really simple, maybe full of maybe bad practice, I don't know. But uh, in a nutshell, I am running this with Unicore, which is service to, to run applications. Um, the main the main script, as you can see here, is that, uh, well, we import some stuff from Dash. This is kind of the instance. Dash under the hood is running a Flask application. So in case you're familiar with Flask, um there are many callbacks here that are in charge of uh, updating the, the the plots as you saw maybe you have used the website already and changed the combo boxes there so nothing too serious here one of the most important things that they really don't know how to solve so far and maybe you have some ideas people in the audience is that uh, the data the data to to plot and show this information is something that i do myself on uh, my own server so i think that it should be here all right and so let's go to i think this is data tools so as you can see here i long time ago about that domain because i wanted to do the plot stuff there but uh, so i have a cron job there that runs a script that up, uh, updates all the sub modules, strip down all the information that I require, like um, mainly about commits, authors, uh, additions, removals, files change, and so on and so forth to generate the other things. So this is something that is running every day. I really don't know if it's a good idea to integrate the whole parsing and processing here because I don't know, it's, it's a lot of things that you need to take care of. But this is how it works. I mean, the data is there. I mean, you can even download it. I mean, it's available here in the repo. And uh, once we download the, the data, then I created some little function that grabs a markdown, parse the markdown, and generates some basic HTML code. So as you can see, every single section that you see here that has some code, sorry, some text, it's a markdown file. The main reason of that is because I wanted something simple for people to go and edit, like, oh, there's a typo, or I want to add something. So how to contribute? I think, for example, that's uh, in docs contribute. So simple mark markdown here that you can go and push and modify. And once I have all these things, Dash has a, I don't want to say complicated, but at least it was new to me, way of hierarchically defined a website. Um, as you can see for the details, uh, this is using some bootstraps components from CSS. And then you have like this nested approach, like I will have a div that has some divs that I will show you. It has a six column we, uh, width, put the content here and so on and so forth. The magic of having these sub pages uh, is something that I discovered maybe one week ago. I didn't know it was that there was a special callback that you could interact with the URL. So literally, this is every time that I go into data, it renders a different page, page layout and the same with the other things. So nothing too fancy. Most of the, this is the only file that kind of runs this whole thing. I decided to put some functions as we saw already, like um, the data utils, which are like really silly little functions to do something. I even left that uncommented commented there. Uh, so try to get the data from the plots. For example, this is just the data ones that has some utility functions, but as well in the web to, 
for example, the style sheets with the CSS, the header, everything is quite simple to, to edit and modify. So as you say, I mean, if you clone the repo, um, the, ex, the in case you're not familiarized with workflow, Python workflow in general, there is this file called requirement.txt. So I recommend you to create a virtual environment so we can create another one. So you create a virtual environment, you activate the virtual environment, then you install the requirements. Boop. And once you install everything, you can run the um, unicorn to have the server locally. Mm. Uh, what was it? Unicorn app server. <clears throat> Just in case you forgot that, and then you will hit download the file and hit everything there. So, yes, yeah, so a comment about Marcus about the, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is that I didn't want to add external dependencies, and this is really simple. I mean, I can show you. Um, Web utils, I think it markdown files. Yeah, this is it. And DCC is from Dash itself. So as you can see, there's no need of markdown to HTML because Dash itself has a way that you give him um, markdown file and automatically transformed into HTML. So it's not that I am I am parsing markdown myself. So yeah, in a nutshell, that is. Uh, at the moment, uh, I create these big pull requests to punish Eddie and uh, ask him to review it. If you agree with this new format, I think that we can merge this thing um, and try to have like a more distributed way. And maybe you can do the quips things after in a follow-up patch. But uh, I am mainly now looking for, we have 10 minutes feedback. What is missing? What is, uh, we should not be here. Where do you think that we should put more effort on? So please. First of all, I like, um, I think the new pages, you know, yeah, I, um, I think it's an improvement. So uh, nothing, you know, just push it to my side. Uh, what I think what's missing on this page or what I, the number one feature I would like to have is some more um, guidelines um, for, you know, existing customers. So first of all, the save service status of Garrett and coin. I think that's just checking whether the website is responding, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so maybe, I don't know. Um, I think what we are missing a bit is the next time a mail comes around uh, saying, okay, uh, Garrett will be down uh, or there is this update coming, um, you know, this morning or Monday and so on. I mean, ideally we wouldn't only send this on the mailing list, but also uh, that it's reflected here. And, and one, um, one comment so on that. Yeah. So, so I think that this would be very good, and it would be very handy to have that in the code review dashboard as well. So, if we yes. are able to information that, that on the in a sense that there's this kind of service notifications, and then how much is the load of the system, and, and is everything going nicely? This kind of information, if that could be extracted both to the dashboard and the main page, that would be quite good because I think that for many contributors or the, basically the, having the workflow, having it in, in here, in the code review somehow. Mm. Um, nice, but uh, so for yeah. Garrett, it's I also, a support it. I used to think that a banner there, at least I have seen in some services is like usually like a, there will be a maintenance break from this time to this time, like you can close or whatever. I don't know. It yeah, could, yeah that, a, Garrett. The status, like uh, how, how is our yeah. branching? Are we, how is, how long is the queue? That sounds Ooh, like that's, yeah. we, that we should resolve by getting our Garrett site to have a status page that shows that information, and then the Qt project site just mirrors that as one of its subtabs. Mm. Yeah, I can, I guess, I'd parse that page as long as there is some stage that I can query. I don't know if there is an API or something about notification, but uh, certainly. Good. Yeah, also related to that. 
you could just frame it and and just okay there's that that page taken from over there being shown on this side. Mm -hmm. yeah go ahead Kay. yeah also just to add uh mean the status of the branches specifically so it's nice to know that garrett on site is online but um you know uh which kind of the state of the branch um where should I pick things to and so on uh, in creator, uh, for instance, where to commit bug fixes to. That's also information that, you know, you just ought to have. And I don't think mm -hmm. there is an easy way to, to, to access that, but you know, yeah, I mean, it could be some Garrett page, so it doesn't have to be this landing page, uh, but we need mm -hmm. this is information we use somehow. I mean, it would be cool if a couple of people could kind of, you know, configure this uh, so that it's then easily accessible. Mm. Yes. There is and there is another idea that I was thinking since we have even though we have many projects but we have different workflows but I don't know how if we'll scale properly is to have this section here how to contribute um which is kind of general as you see uh, but maybe we have another section that is uh, how to contribute to a specific module or project maybe have some tabs or something because the way of contributing, as you said, for example, to Qt base and the pick tools and everything is different to the one to the Qt creator and is different to the one to the Qt for Python. So maybe having something there to highlight these differences, but I don't know if it will be too fine grained. I mean, you can just link to overview pages, which should actually be part of the individual projects. I mean, you yeah. also don't want to main set information on the main page because, like, the creator team is in a far better position to maintain their readme. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Um, yeah. Maybe one idea. Um, we currently list contributors, which is great, and like insertions and deletions. Uh, what we don't list, as far as I can see, is reviewers. Considering that we put quite a bit of emphasis on code review. So you mean on the data section? Oh, I... Uh, like on the main side, I'm not sure. I, I also don't want to make it too uh, overloaded. Mm -hmm. but some yeah, but I mean, I don't know if... Much review, yeah. I don't know if we have... Can we somehow get information about reviewers from gary is there is some api like yes i mean uh, or well you can at least pass a commit message but i think you you can also ah, ask Garrett okay you mean who, who approves yeah. you mean oh okay 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 on on the other hand yeah. ask, asking Garrett for information about you know who's who's provided feedback and so on is it would be an interesting thing if it's possible um how, who's who's contributing to contributing via via comments on reviews. Um, is, I, I will confess to certain self-interest there. But anyway. Is Tobias Hunger in the call? Yes, I think he is. Because he was getting the information from Gareth about all this stuff. And I remember there were gigas and gigabytes of fun. And it was almost impossible to, to query everything. I do remember that. Uh, there were some very large files that we could somehow parse and everything. So the interaction with Gary, I don't know how simple would it be. Are you able to speak to us? Or maybe you're not even here because you were doing that. I see your little icon changing. So maybe you're trying to speak. If not, you can always drop a message. Well, Tobias is still typing. You can yeah. use Gerrit's uh, um, REST API and ask it for a list of comments for uh, comments for a specific change. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing that is uh, takes a lot of time. And also, Tobias discovered that there was a limit on the yes, queries. Yep. We, yep. Even if it was our own instance. Exactly. So I really don't know if like I would like to do this kind of offline. To process something, but sadly, there I don't have the amount of comments that people do on on the. I mean, we can put there Eddie, your name, and the first place, and that's it, right? I mean, <laughs> but, 
the most comments and, and patches. No, but it, yeah, I think it is a, it's a nice uh, idea, but uh, I don't know how simple would it be to have that kind of live. It's not too critical. I mean, the other the other problem is having meaningful metrics is the tricky part. It's finding finding yes. meaningful um, because the, the thing with the commit messages saying who reviewed it is that's that's who 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 said plus two on the last batch after uh, exactly it taken to get exactly. We have a couple of minutes. More ideas, please. I will not take them personal. Uh, it's not like I spent many weekends on this website, <laughs> or maybe yes, no, no. But please, I mean, I really want this site to be something that everyone in the Qt project feels proud about it, can recommend it to people. I also envision that at some point we should have here at some point a list of resources besides what we have in the wiki and the documentation. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people doing content related to Qt, like. YouTube channels, uh, tutorials, books of whatever. I guess that this is also the proper way of doing here to have a resources section that we can maintain and people can submit a pull request advertising, whatever they are doing. Um, so yeah, I think that, but we did explore the Chaos community, Kai. I think that this is was something that Robert was uh, doing. Is Robert on the call? I wasn't aware yeah. of this, so I think we talked about yeah, this I know. a couple of times. Yes, yes. I think that Robert was trying to do it, and I, I, there, there was a there was an issue discussion about data protection there, uh, and that the main yeah, the main was... reason I felt entitled to share the names here is because they are public names on the public repositories. <laughs> so yeah, that would be the same with mm -hmm. Kaus. Yeah, there was some internal chit chat, but I, you know, yeah, um, you were asking for me. Yes, the so, cow uh, community thing. Do you remember? Again, please. The cows community dashboard that you could somehow set up. I remember that you were making some comments about this long time ago, or was only Kai? Why are no, now your? Oh, they yeah, there was was something. Yes. Uh, well, um, I don't remember any details of, of what I wrote then, but I already heard you saying the pragmatic thing. Um, if you take the data which is in Git and or Garrett, this is public data anyway. So you can't make it more public than that. Um, if you add any non-public data to that, you should, of course, be careful. But mm. if you only... Well, also, if when you're combining public data, there might be some things to to consider. But yeah, in in general, uh, it there will be a way to use that data, I guess. <laughs> but you can have hours exactly. of lawyers discussing about this. Exactly. <laughs> I can't make that in a thirty second statement. Exactly. Yeah, we are running out, you run out of time. We already used one minute for the PDF, but I encourage you to go into the notes. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please write it down there as a line, whatever, give your ideas and we can take it as a, a feedback for the page. Okay, that's from my side.